this is about how we manage to move a lot of code, uh, put a lot of code changes into our code base uh, to understand um, to understand how important this is for us. Um, we have to look at the constraints that we face when we make a change. Um, number one is that we have a large audience. Well, we rank number 242 in US traffic and number 340 in the worldwide. So the, there's no such thing as um, there's no such thing as a small change as it could potentially affect millions of users. Number two is that we have a monolithic application. Uh, it has, it's written in Ruby on Rails, and everybody knows how, how that happens. Uh, it has been accruing changes for the past five years. Also, as the organization grew, it acquired a lot of responsibilities. So it implements the service itself. It is the engine for the API services, and it's the hub from which all products are built on. So change has to happen, and so we will need to be able to continue to change this application or, uh, uh, or advance the application to service the, the business. Number three of our, in our constraints is that our team is growing. We have roughly about 80 developers worldwide. And as the team grows, we, we know that um, coordination, there's a logistic and coordination issues that happen. Sorry about the... Um, I originally wrote this um, for a longer talk. So how much change we are talking about? Uh, to understand how much change we have, we could look at the um, change that we've put into our main application or into our main project uh, repository. So from September 15 to October 15, we had about 979 commits from all existing branch for coming from 62 authors about 24,000 additions, 21,000 deletions, about 800 plus files change in the master branch alone. In any given day, we could have about 70 proposed changes and about 120 plus uh, merges in a week. Not the biggest, but considering the constraints that we face, it's not a trivial amount of change. So how do we manage it? Uh, we have short sprints. It uh, lasts about a week. Uh, it encourages simple stories, and that's the advantage of, shorts, of short sprints. We are forced to cut the stories, make them as small as possible. Having a small story means we have simpler implementations, or relatively simpler implementations. And when we do review these changes, it means it's easier to understand and easier to, if, given, even if you have very small context, context about the change, then it's easy for the reviewer to understand it. We have um, the profile of our sprint sees our developers as having a lot of small stories per developer instead of few big ones that, uh, instead of few big ones. Uh, we cannot avoid big features, so what happens is that we, the feature could span several stories and it could even, and it's okay for it to span several sprints. Number two is we do short release cycles. We do weekly releases to production. This means the product is refreshed every week with incremental fixes and features. Uh, the users don't even know it's happening. It's just, it's just there, things get fixed, new features comes to life. Um, advantage of short release cycles is that it's predictable and easy, easy to scope. Just like short sprints, we get short, uh, the short release cycles give us uh, something that we could easily put into our head. And if something goes wrong, and they do go wrong, we know that the change that caused the problems is very likely, very likely happened last week. Um, short release cycles act like a tight read, eval, and print loop. It uh, gives you a faster feedback and turnaround times on fixes. So what about big features? So just short, uh, short sprints have problem, might have a problem with, short, with big features. Short release cycles might have a problem with big features. But the way we do the release is that not everything is available. You might have partially complete features released into production, but the users will never see it. And it's acceptable for, the, for that feature to be hidden across several releases until it is complete. And even then, we might decide not to show it just yet. So 
Another thing we do is we do code reviews, and everybody does code review nowadays. Uh, our code reviews are very informal and lightweight. It comes in the form of annotation on the GitHub pull request. Everybody gets to see it, you know, so everyone is invited. Anybody who has a GitHub account in our organization can jump in on the code review if they want to. The idea being, even though um, it's informal and very short, uh, you get a lot of people looking at a very small change, so you generate quality that way. Um, we also augment our code reviews with uh, automation. We use Code Climate and RuboCop. And what this gives us is that it frees the manual reviews from looking at um, common mistakes and design issues that can be caught by static analysis. So this raises the level of discourse in our review process. And then lastly, we have this um, library called Arturo. It's a feature slider library for Rails. What it gives us is a clean control over feature availability. It lets us control when a feature becomes available uh, based on the account's condition, based on a whitelist, based on a blacklist, based on, um, based on the percentage of accounts. So we could actually scale our releases or scale the deployment of a feature. We get to see how a feature performs on a small percentage of accounts before we decide to put it out there for everyone to use or uh, decide to fix it a little bit more or improve on it a bit more. So if you want to check, our, check out Arturo, you know, just go to GitHub, search for Arturo. Um, you know, there's a little bit more to it than, than I've let on here. So basically, um, managing change for us is applying discrete changes and mitigating those risks uh, that the change brings in. Uh, one requires the other. And that's it. I have to rush it. So. Thank you very much. Thank you.